What's going on, nation? I got some exciting news for you guys. I have finally launched my app for my website, MuscularStrength.com. You can check it out now in the Google Play Store. Right now, we're only available for Android, but we will have that iPhone version out within the next probably four to five weeks, hopefully, fingers crossed. But so far, the reviews have been great, and for those of you guys who are members of the site right now, it makes me so happy to see you guys enjoying it and using it. I told you it was coming. It's finally here. Now you can access all our articles, workout routines, recipes, our forums, and basically interact with each other in a much easier way because it's all right here in this platform. And for those of you guys who use my meal plan system, all that's integrated into the app as well. So if you're out to eat, you want us to make sure you're hitting your macros for the day, boom, click right here, meal plan loads up. So it's super sick, I love it. I got more updates coming this week and next week too, so if you download the app, be sure to watch out for those. But yeah, I'm really excited. But we're gonna move on or else I'll talk about this thing all day. Uh, for today's video, we're gonna be talking about eight dumbest mistakes people make when they do the barbell deadlift. Now, before we get started, if you missed the last episode in this series, we talked about the dumbest mistakes for bent over rows. Make sure you check out that video. And if you guys have any questions about uh, the differences between conventional deadlifts and sumo deadlifts. I'm also going to link to this video I did in my Versus series comparing the two exercises. And I'll put all these links as well as the app link down in the info section below of this video so that as I go over the conventional and sumo during these dumbest mistakes, you guys don't get confused. And if you do, just watch that video right there. So, that being said, be sure to turn on those video notifications if you haven't already. And let's get started. All right, guys, so the first mistake people make is that they think the deadlift is a back exercise. And if you think this is a back exercise, you're automatically setting yourself up for failure when you go perform the movement because if you're pulling with your back, that's how you're going to blow out your lumbar spine or your lower back. It's actually a movement that's performed by pushing through your legs and hips to bring the barbell to the top position. So now you might be asking yourself, well, why do people do deadlifts on back day? Well, at the end of the day when doing the exercise, you are going to flex your back once you're in the down position to help with stability. But the reason why most people, myself included, do deadlifts on back day is because if I was to do chest, I'd be doing my heavy bench press on chest day. If I was to do legs, I would do my heavy squats. If I was to do shoulders, I'd do my heavy overhead presses. So it makes sense to do deadlifts on back day because you have other big movements that you're probably going to be doing throughout your workout that need to be on separate days. So, mistake number one, not a back movement, but it does involve targeting some back muscles. The second mistake people make is they use the wrong foot stance when they're lifting conventional or sumo. And we'll start with the conventional deadlift. Now, for the conventional deadlift, your feet are going to be relatively close together, pretty much anywhere inside of shoulder width. So either they're going to be shoulder width or much closer. For me personally, I'm like somewhere in the middle just like this. Now, the reason why foot stance is so important is because I'll see people do a conventional deadlift and they'll have their feet out like this, and then when they go down to grab the barbell, when doing conventional, your hands have to be on the outside of your legs. Now, what happens when your hands are this wide? You're creating a more of a distance that the barbell has to travel when doing the movement. In order to lift the most amount of weight on a deadlift, you want to basically use as little energy as possible so you can put as much energy into pulling the weight off the ground as you can. So, if I'm actually in the right position, which is like this, and I grab down here, you'll notice that my hands are pretty much underneath my shoulders. What happens when my hands are underneath my shoulders? I'm creating a shorter distance the barbell has to travel. As soon as your arms start getting wider and wider and wider, you're not only making it the, the distance the bar has to travel longer because you have to get down lower to grab the barbell properly, but on top of that, you're putting so much more tension into the muscles in your arms and your shoulders, your chest and your back in order to be able to hold this position throughout the movement. If your arms are just hanging down like this, they're pretty much like dead meat hooks that literally hold the bar as you lift up. As you start going wider and wider, now you're going to have to contract more of the muscles in your upper body just to hold the barbell in place. Now when it comes to the sumo deadlift, number one, you're supposed to have a wide stance like this, toes pointing out, your knees track over your toes, and then for this exercise, your hands are directly under your shoulders. And what's great about this is this is going to make the barbell travel the least amount possible during the movement. But if you have the wrong foot stance here, for example, if you bring your feet in like this 
It's almost like you're doing a toes pointed out conventional and you're going to explode your kneecap. So if you're doing a sumo deadlift, it should feel like your toes are pretty close to the edges of the weights on the sides because they're going to be. If you start bringing them in too close, the concern becomes more about blowing out your knees as opposed to the distance the bar has to travel with your hand position because you can still hold that same hand position no matter where your feet are. But make sure you're keeping them wide like this. Mistake number three is that I see people in the gym taking too long to set up their lift. And if this is people who are using wrist wraps and not using wrist wraps. For the people that don't use wrist wraps, they'll get down like this and they'll, they'll work their hands on the barbell until it feels perfect and then they'll start doing the movement. So maybe they're not down there as long as the wrist wrap guys, but for the, you know, those of you who are going to use wrist wraps, if you're sitting down in this position wrapping your wrist and then you wrap this one, by the time you're ready to go, you might not realize this, but you've already lost a lot of that explosive power that you need in order to lift as much weight as possible off the ground. It's this elastic energy that's stored in the muscles that you're using to get down, grip it, and then pull it up. That's why you guys hear that term, grip it and rip it. Get down, grab the weight, and pull it right up. Same thing for um, like a barbell bench press. You don't want to do any static stretching you know, you guys will see people like put their hand on a pole and go like this and stretch out their chest. The proper way to warm up for a chest press is to actually do some light movements with dumbbells and do dynamic warm ups so you don't lose that elastic energy, that explosive power that's going to be stored in your muscles. It's like an elastic, guys. If I take this elastic and I hold it like this for a super long time, Chances are that when I let it go, it's not going to go back to its original form. It's going to be stretched out a bit. So it lost some of that elastic energy. It's the same thing that's happening right here. If you're taking too long to set up, and you're in this down position for too long, and then you go to lift the weight, it's going to feel like it weighs so much more because you've lost a lot of that power. So what do you do to correct this problem? Well, what you need to do is you've got to teach yourself how to set up properly and then basically go down, grab the weight, and pull it up to the top position. What some people like to do is they like to put their hands over their head just like this, take in a breath, and then down, up, and they come right up with the weight. What I like to do for my reps is I'll set myself up on the barbell, and I'll make sure that I'm in the right position, that I'm far enough away where I need to be, and then I'll, I'll do a couple practice reps where I'll come down and grab it and come back up to make sure it feels right. That way when I go for the actual rep I'm trying to do, I know as soon as I go down without even looking, I'm grabbing the right part of the barbell and I'm gripping it and ripping it to the top of the movement. So when you guys are lifting, don't stay down there too long setting yourself up because it's going to take away that elastic power you need to lift the most amount of weight. Mistake number four is that you guys aren't flexing your back or locking out your elbows before you start the movement. Once you're in the down position, no matter whether you're doing conventional or sumo, once you've got your hands on the barbell, you want to flex your back, keep your back nice and tight like this, and you want to make sure your elbows are locked. You don't want to have any looseness in your arms, and it's for a super important reason, guys. If you have a slight bend in your elbows, even the slightest bend like this, that initial pull off the ground, all this weight is going to transfer to your bicep and your, bi your bicep tendon, and that's where you guys see a lot of tendons tear. The most common injury on a deadlift is a distal bicep tendon tear for that very reason. And the time you have to really watch out for it is when you're using a switch grip. If you're doing an overhand grip like this, chances are you're really not going to get that kind of injury. But as soon as you turn one hand around like this, if you have a slight bend in that elbow, and it's more natural to get a bend like this because of the way you're, sta you're sitting, if you have a slight bend in that elbow and then you come up like that, from here to here, it's like you just threw the entire load onto that bicep at once and then you tried to pull the weight up. So if you're doing that, pay attention and stop. Lower the weights because it's going to feel awkward at first when you start doing this. Lower the weights on your lift, practice getting down to the bottom position, flexing your back and locking your elbows out like this and then performing the lift. Always keep in mind that your arms are just meat hooks there to hold the barbell. They're not supposed to be doing any of the work. So they need to be straight and locked the entire time. The fifth mistake that people make is they're taking a deadlift, which is one fluid movement, and they're turning it into two movements. And I'll show you what I mean. 
You'll see people in the gym go to deadlift and they'll set themselves up. They'll get nice and tight in the bottom position. And then what happens? Their hips shoot up first and then they pull the weight up like this. And they turn the exercise into a back movement and eventually could possibly blow out their lower back. The deadlift is supposed to be a fluid movement where you're lifting the bar and pushing through your legs and extending your hips all at the same time. Your chest stays up the entire time while you do this exercise. So the main reason why that I have seen that most people turn it into two movements is because number one, they have poor flexibility, so they have a hard time getting low enough to get themselves like under the bar to pull it up off the ground. And number two, they have poor mind-muscle connection when it comes to activating their glutes and hamstrings. Some of you guys, when you watch my videos and you see me deadlifting, you, you comment that I'm hyperextending my back at the top of the movement, and I'm not. All I'm doing is I'm lifting the barbell off the ground, and when I get to here, I flex my glutes as hard as I can, and that's what pushes my hips forward. So I'm not doing this. I'm just flexing my butt and locking out my hips. So if you're having a hard time with this and your exercise is turning into two movements, I want you guys to start doing some deficit deadlifts. And the reason why deficit deadlifts are so good, and this helped me out a lot when I first started deadlifting, is because, because we're on an elevated position like this, you're going to have to force yourself to get lower in order to grab the barbell. I'm about two inches off the ground right now, so I have to sit two inches lower just to get my hands on the barbell to perform the movement. And once you're in this position, you're going to feel really tight, especially if you're tight already. So force yourself with light weight, obviously, to get down here and keep your chest up. And then what you'll quickly notice is as you start doing your repetitions and you're doing light weight and going up and down like this, you're going to start feeling your glutes and hamstrings activate more. This is going to teach you to do this the right way. And after doing this for four to six weeks, when you go back to the regular position on the ground, it's going to be a night and day difference and your weights are going to go up like crazy. Mistake number six is not lowering the weight properly. When you guys are at the top position like this, you just completed your first repetition, I don't want to see you just bending over and dropping the weight like that for a few different reasons. Number one, this isn't a lower back exercise. If you guys have a ton of weight in your hands and you just bend over like this to bring the weight down, What's happening as you start to lean forward? You're transferring the entire load to your lower back and you're going to injure yourself. So it's a big no-no. The second thing I see people do, and it's probably because they have to go to a Planet Fitness, they don't have a choice, which sucks, <laughs> but they lower the weight super slow. If you guys are doing like 400 pound, 500 pound deadlift, you don't want to be bringing the weight down like this and doing a negative deadlift because on the way down, is very different than on the way up. On the way down, even if you stay strict like I just was, you're still transferring a ton of the load to your lower back to hold yourself up like this. And if you're going slow, that's a long time to possibly injure yourself. So you don't want to do that either. But what you do want to do is a controlled drop, okay? So what you want to do is go down the same way you came up, but you do want to do it <laughs> with some control. So I went kind of fast, but I controlled the drop, and now I'm ready for my next repetition. You don't want to just drop the weight too quick, because if you guys bounce it like this, it starts going all over the place, and it's going to screw your form up. You want to be able to do a controlled drop, so you can go down, and then back up. Go down, let the weight settle, and go back up, and perform your repetitions like this. So don't bend over, don't go super slow, don't go super fast, do a controlled drop so that you're always in the right position to go into your next repetition. The seventh mistake is bouncing the weight. And this is the worst possible form of a deadlift. And the only reason why it exists today in the fitness industry is because of CrossFit. So if you're a CrossFitter and you're watching this video, you're not going to like what I'm going to have to say right now, but I want you just to keep your mouth shut and wait until I finish, okay? All right, moving on. So. When you guys are deadlifting and you're bouncing the weight off the ground, you're basically skipping the bottom portion of the movement. And depending on what kind of weights you're using, you can literally come here and you can skip like three or four inches at the bottom if you slam it hard enough. And some of these videos I've seen online on CrossFit is you'll see people like, like purposely slamming the weight as hard as they can just so they can get it off the ground faster. And this is going to hurt you for a few different reasons. Let's talk about the, the lifting reason first before we talk about the injury reason. 
If you guys are bodybuilding or strength training, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If your goal is to get stronger with this movement and you want to increase your weight and you want to eventually increase your max pulls on your deadlift, well, when you guys do a max pull, you don't start the exercise like this. If you're going for a 500 pound deadlift, you're not going to like unrack the bar like this, stand straight up and then go down and then bounce it to get your PR. You're going to have to pull that weight off the ground. So if you're doing these bouncing repetitions all the time and not coming to a dead stop after every single repetition, you're going to be severely hurting in the department of being able to lift a heavy load off the ground. It's just not going to work for you. So think about that. If you're trying to bodybuild or trying to strength train, if you're skipping the bottom portion of the movement, you'll never be able to increase your weight. Now, the other aspect I want to talk about is injuries. We just talked about why it's important to have your arms locked out earlier because you can tear your bicep tendon. So if you're lifting a lot of weight and you're bringing it up, if you slam that weight on the ground, there, your body has no choice other than to bend at the elbows and then re-extend because that's your body's way of absorbing the impact of the barbell hitting the ground and bouncing back up. You will not be able to keep your arms locked out. And if you guys start doing loads and loads of repetitions of slamming and pulling and slamming and pulling, eventually something's got to give. And what's probably going to give first is that bicep tendon. And what's going to happen is it's going to rip off your arm and roll up and look really pretty gross for a while. So you don't want that to happen either. So CrossFitters, I'm sorry. You're setting yourself up for an injury. I know it's a competition. You want to get as many reps as possible. To me, it's not worth tearing my biceps. So make sure you guys don't bounce the weights, especially if you're going for a PI. And the last mistake people make when they deadlift is they don't wear the right shoes. I know you guys ask me all the time what shoes I'm wearing, and I'm wearing ASIC wrestling shoes. And a lot of you guys ask if I was a wrestler before, and I was. I wrestled throughout middle school and high school, but that's not the main reason why I wear wrestling shoes when I'm in the gym. These shoes, if you guys can't see, are super thin. They're the closest thing I can wear in the gym to actually still have a shoe on and be as close to being barefoot as possible. And what that means is I'm lower to the ground. And when you're doing a deadlift, guys, every centimeter counts. If you come in the gym and you're wearing like regular running shoes that have an inch thick sole at the bottom, you're already starting the movement an inch higher than me. So you have to work that much harder in order to lift the weight on the ground. And on top of that, if you've got like gel soles especially, you're creating a super unstable surface for yourself to be able to lift the weight. Your feet on the ground, that's your foundation to start the exercise. And if your foundation is already wobbly and weak, it's going to make it really hard for you guys to increase your weights and feel solid when you're pulling the barbell off the floor. So if you're lifting right now, maybe you can't afford to buy new shoes, go to the gym, take off your big clunky shoes and do it barefoot. And you guys are going to notice a huge difference right away, not only your form, but how much weight you can lift. So wearing the right shoes is super important. And that's it for my tips, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I'm going to have some pissed off CrossFitter comments below, but I'll be sure to respond to you guys too. I mean, it's all about safety for me. I've almost torn my bicep tendon before from doing other things, but still, man, it's a very scary thing to happen. You'll be out of the gym for six to eight months. So safety, super important. And in case you guys missed those links from the beginning, if you want to see my other dumbest mistakes or the sumo versus conventional, or if you want to check out my app, I'll post those links down in the info section below. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys. It's kind of like a rubber band, guys, okay? If I go like this with a rubber band and I go back and... Whoa, just snapped. <laughs> yeah, now I can't do my... Now I can't do my example. <laughs>